What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Career Mode. This is episode number 57 and we start today's episode off by officially ending season 4, our most successful season of the save. A major honour in the trophy cabinet for the first time in Fever 22. Took me a while to get it but finally the EFL Cup was delivered last season and of course a second place finish in the Premier League means that Brentford are heading in to the big time for season 5. Champions League football at the Community Stadium absolutely buzzing so as we officially end season four and get our introduction for season five the chairman says to us nobody's surprised to see us in the champions league now we've become one of the strongest teams in the country there's no denying we're here on merit a trophy in the cabinet was a great achievement last season but champions don't rest we want more and bigger accolades so as a reward for your progression with this team we're giving you the resources to provide that we believe in you don't let us down so as we start the new season, on the back of that introductory email from the chairman, we check our budget and Brentford have got... Oh my god! What did I say in the season finale? I, I think we'll get a budget of around £60 million. Pounds. We got £115 million in the budget. The chairman has opened up the war chest. And uh, yeah, his, his bank account is definitely going to be seeing a lot of expenditure in this summer window 150 million but there's the objective which comes with the big budget i talk about it when you're given a big budget you're given big objectives finishing the top four once again hey listen we did it last year we can do it again reached the semi-final of the fa cup like the past two years but in the champions league reached a final and the board have said let's compete across the board we got the squad let's pick up two trophies and after last year's european i think letdown's a bit harsh but even so, let's have a run to remember this year and go as far as we can. The board saying Champions League final. Well, I couldn't even reach the Open League semi-finals last year. And now you want me to reach the Champions League final? Look, listen, okay, here's the deal. We've got a five-star team, right? It's a young team. We're getting better and better season by season. The progression is evident. But... I mean, there's a big step up between the Europa League and the Champions League. First year in it. Is this team good enough to reach the final? Listen, here's the thing. I think quarterfinals, absolutely. No reason we can't get out of the group. That's my minimum expectation. And pass the first knockout round too. Hey, listen, if we get the luck and the luck of the draw, maybe we could get to the semis. But the final in our first year, 115 million or not. I think that's a very tough objective given to us there from the board. But hey, listen, based on the progression we'd be making, based on the money they've given to me for this summer transfer window, I guess I can see why they've given it to me. And after last year, winning our first major honour, you know, we, we were runners-up in the Premier League last year. <laughs> And I'm saying that laughing a little bit because, yes, we were <laughs> so many points behind Liverpool. They practically won it by Christmas. But even so, th there's no reason we can't compete on multiple fronts this year. There's no reason we can't pick up another major honour and maybe another one as well this season. The board said they want two this year, but I don't know. CL final. Look, I'm going to give it my absolute best shot. It's our first year in the Champions League. I'm going to go all out for it, baby. But... I know it's going to be very difficult indeed. So, a look at our squad then for Season 5. Loads of players, their deals are coming at the end of the year. And some noteworthy ones as well. Uh, Ryan Niambe got a new extension. Obviously, he's lost his place to Tariq Lamptey. But the former Blackburn Rovers right back is still a very good backup for the former Brighton man. Uh, we also gave Sebastian Besse uh, a new contract as well. He's one of our higher potential youth grads. Ricky J. Jones is staying, of course. As is this man. He's the reason we won the EFL Cup last year. Jesse Lingard. Yeah, now he's in his 30s. He's the vet. He's the oldest player in this team. He's staying. However, I'm not sure about these guys on Yaker and also Asia. Both out of contract. I'm not too sure to extend their deals. Both 27 years old now or look for better replacements. Now, also on this as well, Leicester City. We discussed it. Relegated last season. They've still got an awful lot of amazing players. I was looking at their squad very intensely in the summer. And I found quite a few players there that could come in. So for our transfer policy this season, we're a challenging club now. Let's act like one. Go sign some stars. Leicester's relegation is a chance to pick up some top deals, raid the Foxes, and also keep the band together. Don't look to sell our star players unless forced to. So you've loads of great players that Leicester have. You've got Donny, Von, uh, Donny van der Beek, uh, Baku is there, uh, Scott McTominay and Didi is still there as well. Loads of awesome, awesome players. Definitely a few that I wouldn't mind bringing to the community stadium if I can get them on cut price deals. However, the first signing I made for the new season, a season 
is a free transfer. Yeah, 115 mil in the transfer budget, and I'm signing a freebie. Cheapskate docks back at it again. But hey, listen, this guy looks like the real deal. Francisco Santos, 83 rated Brazilian centre half, only 21 years old, 6 foot 1, 94 strength already, and some fantastic defensive stats. Physically, this guy looks like an absolute monster. So I'll give him a stop a development plan that will train the acceleration and also give him a high defensive work rate. So he looks like an absolute bargain on a freebie and he can slot right into our back three as well. I love Sean Pratt, I really do. Out of the academy, great young centre half, but he still only shows great potential. Since he had a potential downgrade, he's never got back, which is so frustrating. So I think Pratt now is going to have to come off the bench. But Santos, is he the new Leal Guterres? What a reference and a throwback that is. I guess we'll have to wait and see. Even so... He looks really good. But as for the Foxes again, look at the stars they've got in the championship. Donny van der Beek, Wilfred Ndidi, Flam Mendy, Scott McTominay, Hoiberg, uh, Jason Denea, the Belgian, and also Baku as well. And James Justin is still there at the King Power as well. So many great players Leicester have kept hold of going down to the championship. And they want to bring in another star, Jesse Lingard, the 32-year-old, just signed a contract extension, so he's going nowhere. However, it did give me pause for four. Brendan Rodgers says he wants an attack in the in Championship to get them back to the top flight. So I said, OK, out of all your players there, the one I really want is Wilfred Ndidi. So I said, Brendan, step back into my office. Don't go back to Leicester. Stay here. Let's chat, let's chat some more. I can give you an attacking midfielder, not the one you want in Jesse Lingard, but you can have Alex Iwobi, the former Toffee and the former Gunner. How about valuation for Ndidi and Iwobi? He said no, but he only wanted a few million more, so I said no, I'm not going to budge on much more than a valuation. 70 mil plus Iwobi, and Rogers said okay. Look, Leicester are a championship side. Those stars aren't going to want to stay there. They're going to hand in transfer requests. You'd imagine someone have got relegation release, uh, release clause. Unfortunately, in the game, that isn't possible. But even so, Ndidi is 88 overall and in the prime of his career. 28 years old. I had to get him in. He was the one I wanted. And our first signing of this season is a club record transfer. Wilfred Ndidi welcomes the community stadium. And if you know me, you know I love players like this. I've always been a massive fan of Ndidi. His energy is unbelievable. It's infectious. He's got a great character. He's a really hard-working lad. And Wilfred Ndidi, at 88 overall, is in. What an absolute bargain. 70 mil plus Iwobi, who, as we know, we hadn't given much game time to due to Mbwemo's resurgence. Look, man, coming in. And Jesse Lingard being a great, great signing on a freebie as well. So Ndidi comes in, the highest-rated player in the team. And it's an absolute bargain. And I said, it when Leicester went down. What an opportunity to sign players on cut price deals. I mean, it's not really much of a cut price deal on 70 mil. That's over the valuation by a million plus Iwobi too. But listen, I think that's a brilliant, brilliant deal there. I really do hope in future versions of FIFA that when a team gets relegated, they will let their players go on cut price deals or loan them back to the top flight. Because quite frankly, it's realistic. But unfortunately, in the game, it doesn't always work out that way. However, if I've got to pay 70 mil plus a player that I wasn't using that much to get in Didi, so be it. I am a massive fan of the Nigerian. He's absolutely amazing. Such a hard-working character. And I'm so happy to have him here. And that's why I said with Onyeka, I'm not sure whether to let him go or extend the contract. Because I was going to sign a new holding mid. I mean, I had plenty of options at Leicester City alone. With Scott McTominay there as well. Plus Hoiberg too. But yeah, I'm really happy with the choice of Ndidi. McTominay would have been cheaper, but I wanted Wilf and I've got him. So following that, some big bids. One for Niambe, of course. He just signed an extension, so of course he's going nowhere. One for Gutierrez as well. Wanted to go to the Mestaya. Valencia putting a bid in there, but I said no. Roberto staying here. He's loved at a community stadium and he wants to stay here with Brentford in the Champions League. Also, a couple of bids for Rico Henry as well, our left back, uh, coming here from Stadrain and also Napoli and Borussia and Gladbach as well. Rejected both of those bids there. He and Stanley Young shared the game time last season and I think because Stanley just isn't growing I think I probably will have Rico Henry now starting as our left wing backs unfortunately Stanley's potential just never increased despite how amazing it was in the first season we accepted it for Dominic Thompson though uh, Bournemouth putting in a bid for the former Arsenal uh, left back out of contract in the season at the end of the season sorry and obviously he, he gets some minutes to be fair he gets some minutes as a squad player but I'm not going to extend the contract I'm okay letting him go he was the first goal scorer in the series but I'm okay letting him go and also 
also quite a few more players on the free agents list as well. Now, I missed out on the main one I wanted, Palowski, the Polish striker. But to be fair, talk about a cool destination, right? Robert Lewandowski's retired. Where's his regen gone? Bayern Munich. I kind of love that. But there were four others that were still available to be snapped up, including this guy, uh, Julian Albert. He's an 18-year-old French winger with some very decent pace to start off with. 71 uh, overall, 91 sprint speed, and it was 80, 84 acceleration as well. Looks a very decent dribble of the ball as well. So get our attacking work rate up to high. And I think this guy could be a very decent inside forward. We don't play all wingers in this team. If we do change our system, you could get some game time there. And also, we missed out on the guy I wanted, uh, the Polish striker. But I found this guy, a Croatian uh, free agent striker, Pavlovic. Maybe a Mandzukic region? Not entirely sure, but to be fair. 21 years old, 72 overall. And there's a squad player with some, you know, relatively, let's say, decent upside. He doesn't have a potential tag, unfortunately. But again, 72 overall, only 21 years old. As a squad striker, he's not a bad option to have. We'll need a lot of bodies this season to be competitive on all four fronts. Trying to retain our EFL Cup, the FA Cup, the Premier League, and of course the Champions League too. So the more bodies we can get in, the better. And on free transfers, you know that's what I like. So fourth side, of the window so far, Pavlovich arrives on a free as Dominic Thompson goes to Bournemouth for one of three quarter mil as well. First goal scorer of the series, and it was Dominic Thompson. And also, how about this? A big bid from PSG for Sean Pratt. 32.7 mil. We know he's probably coming off the bench now, but he's an academy grad. He's going nowhere. We still love Sean, even if he won't grow very quickly. Bessie's been loaned out, though. He's going to Goodison Park for a year. 73 overall, 19 years old. This guy looks pretty decent. But again, in this team, he's not going to get the game time behind him. Buemo, Lookman, and also Lingard as well. And speaking of, Adam Ola, how about this? Well, he tore Jurgen Klopp's Reds apart in the EFL Cup semi-final, scoring four over two legs. They like the look of him, based on that game, uh, those games there. 43.5 mil offer for Lookman, but we said absolutely not. The former Toffee and RB Leipzig man is staying right. Right here. No way am I selling look man after last season's heroic. So another bid for Eco Henry, which of course we rejected this one from Freiburg. Again, I think I will be keeping him probably now starting as our left wing back with Stanley Young dropping to the bench. I think realistically it's probably the right thing to do now. His free ratings higher. Stanley just isn't growing. And as for the Academy as well, just the two players in there now. I haven't given any youth academy objectives for me this season. I think like last season, I might just take a year off. The team is great. It's gonna be hard to get youth players some game time. We've still got some youth players here that could play some minutes this season in the Champions League. So there we go. August arrives. We signed four players, a club record signing in Ndidi, a massive, brilliant freebie in Santos, and a couple of good squad players as well. Brentford, a five-star team, and we still got 40 mil and a month to work with in the summer transfer window. This summer is not done yet. But that works. This is the Korea Mode, guys. Big thank you for the season. Over. If you enjoyed it, if you had it, please do drop a like. Much love to you all. Have a fantastic day. I'm going to see you for the next episode of Korea Mode. First Premier League games and the Champions League group stage draw. Don't miss it. It's wild. Very soon.